This is finally gonna be the Ford versus Chevy showdown that you guys have been waiting for. It's a 351 Windsor Ford versus the classic 350 small block Chevy. Now we've done this kind of shootout before where we take two different engine brands and build them as identical as we can and see what happens. Well, this time we have got them closer than ever. Let's have a look at the combinations that we're gonna do here. First of all, the short blocks on both of them are just standard rebuilt stuff. Cast pistons, stock rods, stock cranks, nothing special. You can buy both of these short blocks from Summit Racing. They're about the same price. The 350 Chevy is from First Mate Marine. The small block Ford is from an outfit called ATK. Now, as far as aftermarket components, they're all the same. We're gonna use the same Holley XP 750 CFM carburetor on both engines. We have MSD ignition. The distributors are locked out so they don't have a timing curve in them. So there's no part of the ignition curve that is gonna affect our results here. They're locked out. Both of these things have an Edelbrock dual plane intake manifold. It's a Performer RPM air gap. We've even got the same camshaft in both engines. They're both from Comp Cams. They are a 230, 236 duration at 50 hydraulic roller. The compression ratio, we have a tiny bit of a difference. Small block Chevy has a little bit more than 9.2 to one. The small block Ford has a almost nine and a half to one. So a slight advantage right there. It also has two more cubic inches. So, you know, Ford guys go ahead and argue about that. We've got a full length under chassis passenger car header on both of them with one and three quarter inch tubes. Okay, well, that was like easiest dyno test ever because you did all the work before we even got here. <laughs> that seems to be kind of an ongoing theme here. What are you so. trying to say, Steve? Nothing. <laughs> so that's it. I mean, 422.9 pound-feet of torque at 4,300 RPM, and up here at the top, 425.6 horsepower at 5,900. What's your opinion? I mean, I think for a 9.2 to 1 compression motor, it's not that bad. I think it would be a 370 horsepower motor without this head. Well, yeah, the <laughs> AFR head is like the kill for I sure. I mean, it, you know, a pretty typical manifold that we use over and over again because it's so good, but that cylinder head really, I think, uh, picks it up a bunch. Yeah. Pretty much made what we were expecting, so. Yeah. yeah. No, no I surprises. Think, I think it's pretty good. It's you guys pretty much nailed it. Thought. Question is, will the Ford beat it? We're going about to see, I think. I think the Ford. I think the Ford's it. gonna take this one away. Let's go hang it on there. <laughs> yeah. I bleed Ford blue, Dolce. I know, me too. Ford burger. <laughs> Ford burger. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're ready to run the Ford and Chevy guys. I'm gonna give you a little bit of ammunition in order to fight this out on the internet. The 351 Windsor has a tiny bit more compression than the small block Chevy and two more cubic inches. Why is that? Well, because the 351 came from the factory with a 3.5 inch stroke and the 350 Chevy has a 3.48 inch stroke. That 20 thousandths of an inch, I don't think it's really getting you that much, but hey, that's up to you to decide. The small block Chevy has a factory blueprint spec of 9.028 inches, whereas this one is 9.5 inches. What is deck height? It is the distance between the center line of the crankshaft and the top of the block here where the cylinder head bolts on. Now, why would that matter for performance? First of all, it's heavier because it's got a taller deck height, but it also means that the intake manifold is potentially wider and the runner lengths may be a little bit different and runner length can affect performance. A longer runner tends to make more low end torque, a shorter one tends to make more high end power. And in a dual plane like this, there is a mix of long and short. So there could be a clue in there somewhere. The 350 Chevy came out in 1967. The 351 Windsor came out in 1969. They're very much a product of the same era. And because they've been around about that same period of time, the development and the expectation of horsepower in the aftermarket has been extensive. Subscriber, you know why I think the Ford might be better than the Chevy? You painted it blue. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> it's just so much more regal and dignified with this blue paint. Okay, here's why I think it might make more power. Because of the symmetrical port layout on the Windsor, 
I think the average port length on the manifold runners is a little shorter. It's gonna tune at a higher RPM. It's gonna make peak power at 6,000 rather than 5,900 or 61. And I think this is actually a better head design. I think the head could be better. I mean, the advertised numbers are virtually the same for the Chevy and Ford AFR uh -huh. 195 head. Mundo, right? No, it's better by six by numbers. By a wee bit. Yeah. By, by two by tenths of a point in compression and three wow. cubic inches. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so what we just saw with the numbers going by on the screen was basically really close to the Chevy, but we got to look at the graph. So in the end, the Ford made 427.1 pound-feet of torque at 4,200 RPM, and up top, 430.6 horsepower at 6,100. But that does not tell the whole story. Really overlaying the two engines and looking at them together, and then doing the math to average the power throughout the curve, I mean, we're talking there within 2.2 pound-feet of torque from 35 or 3,200 to 6,200, and they're within one and a half horsepower. So you can see that the Ford actually looks a little bit stronger in here and it made just a few more numbers up high, but in the end, you're never gonna feel that in the car. They're the same. We're talking twosies, threesies. They're both good. Yeah. <laughs> It should be a surprise to no one, in fact. It's an interesting study because what it tells you is that there is no inherent design flaw or benefit in either engine in straight power production. You might see it in longevity and things like that. You know, the two, the Chevy center exhaust ports being right together in an endurance application can be a lot of heat buildup. I mean, there's little things like that. This, I don't know what the rod length in this is, but it's got more deck height. So I'm assuming it's got more compression distance and yeah. more connecting rod in it. Yeah, this has only 20 thousandths more stroke. It's 3.5 versus 3.48. Yeah, this reminds me of kind of going back to uh, bore versus stroke stuff. You yeah. Know, and when we've done that test, in this kind of world that we live in, in the streetcar, these type of engines, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that much. I mean, this thing's got a bunch more deck height, mm -hmm. but it doesn't change anything. I mean, in extreme cases like Pro Stock or something, I guess it does. But in this situation, the street stuff, it just doesn't matter all that much. Here's the last thing actually to consider is that I went through the Summit Racing catalog because I bought all of the parts for all of these. And I really thought that the Ford was gonna be more expensive, but I did the math and they're very, very close. So Ford versus Chevy, which is it for you? It's the same thing! <laughs> it like just it. doesn't matter. And that's what we learned this time on Engine Masters, which is presented by Amsoil, and we really appreciate the support from Summit Racing and Permatex and Autometer and Holly in the form of Earls and also Mr. Gasket. Nice. Senior Gasket. <laughs> All right. All right, see you next time on Engine Masters.